Hello YouTube, um, I want to tell you a few interesting cases today and uh, they took place, uh, at least two of them, in Azerbaijan. It's a transcontinental country located at the boundary of Eastern Europe and Western Asia. It's actually a part of the South Caucasus region and so that you know it's bounded by the Caspian Sea to the east, Russia to the north, Dagestan, Georgia to the northwest, Armenia and Turkey to the west, and I ran to the south. Baku is the capital and the largest city. Now, Azerbaijan is considered to be the most secular Muslim majority country, and it has a tremendous history, as well as paranormal phenomena. I have described some of it in my videos, and I know that my video about the underwater humanoids of the Caspian Sea has been viewed by thousands of people, and I invite you to do the same. Please see my link in the description to this video. There are so many interesting subjects to delve into. Some paranormal, some of the historical mysteries varieties. Let me give you an example of what I would like to do videos on. Absolutely fascinating mysteries from that country. The treasure of Alexander the Great from the Shamaha. The Doomsday Gate the horsemen's and predators in the footsteps of the ancient seal from Jalilabad, secrets of the late medieval city of Aksu in Azerbaijan, the mystery of an ancient skull with a brand found in the south of Azerbaijan, treasures at the bottom of the Caspian Sea, finds of ancient settlements of Azerbaijan, archaeological secrets of the Baku fortress, and the Shahri Yunnan, a flooded city on the Caspian Sea. But today I will tell you about a settlement or village in Azerbaijan and um, about an, abdu an abduction that was attributed to you of foe. It's a very complicated case and one day the rest of the subjects uh, will be addressed. So prepare to be mesmerized. So let's look at the events and the village of Bailov in the year of 1985 there were children who saw a yellow ufo and then found themselves on board of it the fate of two of them is still unknown however i need to describe first where bailov is who knows what attracted the aliens to it or whoever the creatures aboard that craft if it was a craft were um the vill uh, the also, uh, there are other places in that country that could have attracted them. So the village of Bailov has a centuries old history. Uh, some historians believe that Alexander the Great himself was in this area and he reached the Apsheron Peninsula. Bailov, or in a Zeri language, Bail, is a settlement on the Sabail district of Baku in Azerbaijan Republic, the main base of the Azerbaijani naval forces today. In the Baku Bay, opposite Bailov, there were the remains of one of the most mysterious buildings of the Middle Ages, the Sabail Castle. The foundation and elements of the castle walls could be seen during periods when the level of the Caspian Sea was falling. In 1235, in the year 1235, uh, Shirwan Shah Fariburs III built fortifications on one of the islands of the Bail Bay, which were later called the Sabail Castle. It was also called Shahri Saba, Shahri Nau, Underwater City, Caravan Serai, Bail of Stones, Ruins of the Sabail Castle. The fortress was probably destroyed by an earthquake and has been hidden underwater for many centuries. After the fall of the water level, the Russian Orienta Orientalist Berezin discovered that castle. For a long time, it was completely underwater and stood at a distance of about 300 meters from the shore. The castle, shrouded in legends, was completely underwater until basically relatively uh, recent times. Um, it, it's interesting. Rectangular stone slabs measuring 70 by 25 to 50. Uh, with relief uh, centimeters with relief images were discovered by an archaeological expedition in 1939 in the late 2000s 
Okay, the upper parts of the building appeared out of the water. Archaeologists have extracted parts of the frieze of the castle, and they are exhibited on the territory of the Shirwan Shah Palace Museum. There were 706 plates with images of animals, plants, and Arabic letters that were raised from the bottom of the sea. Twelve portrait images of people apparently known at that time were found. Check out the images if you ever go there. On one stone, by the way, is also the image of Shirwan Shah during whose reign this structure was erected. I will not say any more. So if you ever visit that land, you will know some of its fascinating history. And if you are interested in ufology and paranormal phenomena, like underwater aliens, you can see my videos. And I urge you to go to that museum. But here is the UFO abduction story. And this is the most information I have now. But there is more in my video than just this story. So in 1985, six children aged four to eight years old uh, disappeared without a trace in the Azerbaijani settlement of Bailov. Local residents, together with the police, organized the search. After unsuccessful attempts to find the missing, the parents turned to the head of the republic. Two groups of military men were specially, meaning on a mission, sent to the village. They had to comb the district beyond Bailov during the survey of the territory. It was possible to find a circle of burnt grass with a diameter of about 10 meters. The experts who arrived from Baku took samples and found out that the plants were not just burnt, they were subjected to the so-called radioactive burning of plutonium and thorium. In addition, ash samples were taken at the site, as it turned out containing uh, protactinium. Where could such unusual substances have come from in the vicinity of a small settlement in Azerbaijan? Researchers believe that a UFO landed there, moving due to thermonuclear reactions, or move, using this as a means to, to operate, uh, to move about. Uh, the traces that were left is also a product of similar technology. Now listen to this. On the sixth day of the search, four out of six missing children were found 3.2 kilometers from the settlement. They were sleeping, sitting under a large tree, as if nothing had happened. They were taken by helicopter to a local hospital where doctors did not detect exhaustion or any injuries in the lost children. Even there were no abrasions and bruises which would have inevitably appear if the children wandered all this time in search of their home. When the found ones came to their senses, they were thoroughly interviewed so that they would tell where they had been all this time and help to find their friends. What the investigators heard was more like a fiction. The children said that with one voice that they saw around that sphere or ball in the sky which resembled a banana in color. It sank to the ground and window opened in it from which a green ray of light appeared. The children were literally dragged inside through this light tunnel. They were handled very carefully by some creatures that looked like clumps of yellow-white light. The children called them sunny bunnies, or I guess in English you could say sunbeams, sunlight spots, zaychiki, is what we say in Russian. The abductees were not spoken to, but at some point they were placed in a white hemisphere. They stayed there for a while, after which it began to rotate. At the same time, the children themselves were in a state of weightlessness or flight. After manipulations, four children were sent back to Earth, and what became of the two is unknown. Local ufologists communicated with the already grown-up participants of those events. Guram Ahenazi was five years old at the time of this encounter or contact. He still remembers in detail what he once told the police. At the same time, 
the man is skeptical that his childhood friends were taken with them by, by these unknown creatures. As Guram says, it is unclear whether they pulled out a lucky ticket or vice versa became victims of those circumstances. Because I am glad that I was returned to my native element. I have a great wife and three children and no one knows what they have and whether they are alive at all. Indeed, no matter how many relatives searched for the missing in 1985, all was to no avail. As for the reaction of the police officers, they believe that someone stole the children and the rest were inspired that if they tell the truth, uh, that they, these people, the abductors, will come for them. But no matter how much the investigators tried to pull the truth out of the children, they failed to find out anything other than what I told you above. Um, so maybe in 1985, not far from the village of Bailov, there was a contact with an extraterrestrial civilization, or maybe a civilization from another part of our planet, or maybe even the underwater one, you know. But I want to tell you about a similar incident um, that took place in 2014 in the Russian Far East. There's not a lot of detail. Well, the Orochi. This, it's an indigenous ethnicity, nomads there. They took children from boarding school on two reindeer sleds on vacation to their camp, you know, where they keep herds and uh, nomadic lifestyle. It's a long way, four days. Along the way, there were huts or winter quarters, and they spent the night there. At the nearby crossings, um, there were already traps that were set up before uh, by the nomads and hunters. Um, the three children were left in the hut. So the adults went to the traps, to the traps uh, themselves. Now, in the sky, the Orochi saw some kind of an object, like a barrel. It was yellow, but there was no hum, no sound coming from it. The adults returned, and next to the hut, a circle was found. There was no snow, there was a circle, burned out 30 meters in diameter, I guess. There were no children, there were no footprints, uh, because how can you hide them in the snow? The ground in that place stank of burnt matches. So they searched later in vain. The cops only arrived in the spring, but it was no use. The person who reported it was in that hut, or winter headquarters, as they call it, two years later, in the summertime. That burnt circle is not even overgrown with grass. They, the Orochi, migrated from those places, because the area has a bad reputation, and the wild beasts do not live there. Arochi number today only 1,000 people. It's a very interesting ethnicity in the Khabarovsk region of Russia. So if you ever go there, you know what to ask, if you can. And now I want to take you back to Azerbaijan. In an interview to the Russian newspaper Komsomolska Pravda, uh, on August 17, 2018, a former Soviet spy master revealed a few things about UFOs over Azerbaijan. He, is, um, uh, he was a reserve major in reserve, Vasily Kuzminich. He was catching uh, spies from NATO and other countries, and he also watched the flying saucers. The third main directorate, Special Department of the KGB of the USSR, Military Counterintelligence. Vasily had served in this unit for many years. A native of Samara, he graduated from the Faculty of Aviation Equipment of the Daugav Pils Higher Military Aviation Engineering School. He was trained in the area of automated flight control system of aircraft. The newspaper reporter Ask him, Vasily Mikhailovich, it turns out that you were in charge of the flying saucers. The response was like this, well, saucers and not saucers, 
but I can say that everything is tied up with the flight control system of aircraft. It performs the role of a crew. Even at that time, aircraft were automatically withdrawn to intercept air targets. The pilot had only to exercise control, receive commands from the ground to destroy and press the trigger. The system even made a combat labels itself so as not to get into the affected area of fragments from its missiles. We serviced those systems. So, in, but in 1984, Vasily um, was taken from the Ministry of Defense to serve in the KGB of the USSR. In the area of his attention was everything that related to the section of the criminal court of the Russian Soviet Federal Socialist Republic, especially grave state crimes. He was asked, what do you think about flying saucers? He responded, I saw a UFO when I served in Azerbaijan. The object flew over our unit, its diameter. Well, the pilots who were in the air on parallel courses, well, they said different things. The pilots who saw it from afar claimed that it was 800 meters in diameter, and those who flew in the immediate vicinity of it said 80 meters, like a stadium. It was just like a blue sphere in color, resembling the flame of a gas burner. It was moving at the speed of 700 kilometers an hour, moving at the same velocity. Explanations were never found out at that time. I con concluded that this is a phenomenon that goes beyond our knowledge. By the way, the pilots noted that there was no turbulence in the atmosphere. That is, it is clear the nature of the object is not one of ours. I remember my supervisor, when he received all the documents on this incident from me, he said, well, what resolution should I write on these pieces of paper of yours? In short, I tear them all up. Stop doing nonsense. Better look for spies. And the reporter said, the reporter said it seems that's what everyone does. And um, the uh, spy master replied, now, imagine yourself in the place of a military commander it is necessary to do something further to send these pieces of paper to someone yeah said the reporter i would have, have probably turned it up too well vasily kuzminik got married while still serving in grozny in the year of 1983 um, and then when he submitted his report um, he went to his wife's homeland, to Chelyabinsk. So, Vasily Mikhailovich has not been drinking alcohol for many years. So, the reporter thinks, was it like encoded in him? Or uh, was it uh, so that he doesn't uh, untie his tongue and speaks too much about things he should not? Well, it turned out to be neither. Um, the spy master said, I have always used alcohol in moderation and have never been a smoker. My father always smoked so much at home, it was too much. And you know, after 50, you know, life flies by very quickly. There's not much left, but there are a lot of plans. Why harm your own body? I just decided not to drink, even on the New Year's Eve. Um, a reporter said, you know, it seems to me that even now, in principle, you could be a good James Bond. And the response was, why could be? I am him, he laughed. There are no former ones of us. He meant that there are no former KGB counter-espionage operatives. And it so happened that Vasily Mikhailovich first frank conversation with the journalist turned out to be his last. The 58-year-old um, subject of the interview and the, of the article by Komsomolska Pravda died right behind the wheel of his car. And he never found out about the material that was to be published. His heart stopped. So, we have learned today that UFOs, whatever they may be, 
sometimes abduct children and that sometimes those counterintelligence operatives who reveal their knowledge about UFOs die shortly thereafter. Of course, it could have been a coincidence, but I wonder how many people of equal rank, stature and experience would want to speak to newspapers again. So this is what I wanted to let you know. Azerbaijan is a very interesting country, as are its neighbors Armenia and Georgia and I, I tell you about paranormal phenomena in those countries too and I'll tell you more. And uh, the subjects that I talked about in Azerbaijan, I definitely want to cover one day. If you like my research, please support me to the links you will find in description to this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please tell others. I kind of want to spread the knowledge that I have about uh, worldwide paranormal phenomena, not only Russia, Ukraine or uh, uh, Eurasia. So please do that and uh, like my videos. Thank you.